Hello and welcome to all the men and women of the West. I'm Joe here from East Macaulay Stan. Hello and greetings. And we're back and better than ever. So last time on Reboot, or I should say The Legend of Huma, we had our hero having just to say buried his bestie. Okay, not Kaz, but the other bestie. Okay, not Hart. I don't mean his girlfriend. I mean Magius. So kudos to whoever guessed it the first time. Guessed it correctly, I should say. Anyways, the heroes decide to try to take the fight to the enemy, getting assurances from a black robe that the black robes will finally turn on Draco and Takesis, which, yeah, right. Um, but the story from there continues into... A lengthy battle scene, one which sees Galandracos in the end defeated, only to decide to, frighteningly enough, for fear of Tachesis, destroy his own soul. As he did not want to face his punishments at her hands. I say punishments plural, because knowing her it's going to be plural, not singular tense. Dakesis, for her part, um, seeing that her flunky is just uh, bit in the dust, you know, because we have to reference, another one bites the dust, another one gone, another one down, another one bites the dust. Because I know of I'm fourth. Yeah, like, I know I'm in a bit of a mocking mood, but, like, yeah. Anyways, she decides to try to. Um, communicate telepathically, or maybe telepathetically, with Huma, and basically tries to offer him lots of kinky fun time with her. Huma considers it because she's apparently hot, but then says nope. So she's not hot enough. Like, she's probably maybe Xena hot, but not Morgan, Venus, or Discord hot, to make reference to Hercules' legendary journeys. Oh, and I have to shout out our Storyfire account. Do check that out for our reviews of Hercules' legendary journeys, as well as our Substack where we're doing written reviews and analysis of the series and the characters. Anyways. Gwyneth, or Hart, or whatever she's called, ends up trying to fight Takesis off as best she could, to little effect. Huma ends up having to basically rely on the aid of prayer, luck, and, well, paladin. But what's interesting is how he reacts when he first finds out that Tachesis has entered the mortal realm. She has entered Kryn. And he ends up hardly impressed. And interestingly, ends up having a bit of a discussion with her. I am bored with games. You flutter like a butterfly. Is what Tachesis tells him and Gwyneth. And she then falls into denial as she sees the dragon lance glowing. Light? You cannot have light. Because you've got to bear in mind she basically plunged the world in darkness when she came down from the skies. And she's the most gargantuan thing in existence right now. Um, we're not going to fat shame her because we're not that sort of YouTube channel. But how do I put it? She fat! She, oh. At least in her dragon form. Yes. Yes. All right. About the... Evil the, version of Miss Piggy? Not that skinny. I mean, let's get on with the l big giant uh, piece of lard. All right. She then ends up saying, Paladin cannot protect you forever. At which point, Gwyneth begins to... Well, lose a bit of faith and says, I cannot evade her much longer. And Huma just nods and says, It is time we met her. And Takesis misunderstands, saying, Come to me then, meet my embrace. 
But Huma, being Huma, is too badass for such things, saying, I offer you the same chance I gave to Galandrakos, Dark Queen. I offer you the chance to surrender. Saying that to the devil. Big cojones. Especially one who could simply sit on a continent and make it sink. Yeah. And she's incredulous at this. And honestly, he probably has bigger cojones than even Gallivant. And I don't blame her for being shocked. You jest in the time of your destruction, mortal Huma. I find your humor interesting. I shall have an eternity to amuse myself. You have Huma. See if I am jesting. This is the power of Paladin. No mortal weapon can strike you down. But the Dragonlance is no mortal weapon. You are mortal, though. Knight of Salamnia. I am a Knight of Salamnia. I am the hand of Paladin, of Kiri Jolith, and of Habakkuk on this world. You are on Kryn. You are mine, Queen of Darkness. Wow. And here's the scary part. He's right. She's at a much lower power level in that realm than in her home in the abyss. And his response to her threats and whatnot is just charge. And he proceeds to... How do I put it? Tear her a new one, literally. Stabs her with the dragon lance. But the problem is her icor sprays all over him, in particular onto his leg, and it seems to start to um, melt his leg. And apparently parts of Gwyneth. Yuck. That's painful. Yowie. Um, and Gwyneth, for her part, is bleeding profusely and is covered in ragged, dripping cuts. Her wings are tattered, and, well, it's apparent that she's dying. Um, and Gwyneth, of course, crashes to the ground and lies dying. Um, yeah, this is actually one of the more tragic scenes, as... She shifts to her human form. Um, and the thing is, one of her, her arms lies twisted beneath her. And there's nothing he can do. And he tries to plead with her as she lies dying. Which, this is one of those really, really tragic scenes and it's reminiscent of a scene from goodwill hunting when you have sean deguire who says to will you've never been near a war if i asked you of war you'd throw shakespeare at me once more into the breach dear friends but you've never been near one never held your best friend's head as he die as he lay dying looking to you for hope and help that's kind of what happens here except this is worse because this is Uma holding the woman he loves while she lies dying, looking to him for help. And she tries to save him. And Huma asks her, why are you human? Are you healing yourself? It, it doesn't matter. The fault only hastened the damage. I only think, Paladin, that you are still alive. And Tachesis offers to save them both. And the thing is, Huma tells Gwyneth, and Gwyneth ends up telling him, you cannot kill her. That is not possible. But you cannot release her either. All Kryn will suffer for her torment. My life is not, not worth that. And Huma tells her, I won't let you die. You don't have any choice. Um, and she says, I want you 
I want you to remember as, me as I am now. Now, for this is truly me. I first truly lived as a human. I loved as a human. Now, in truth, no, she's not human. She's a dragon. But she wishes to be human, which is tragic. And she dies. At which point, Huma sees to the finishing of the job. Now, he's probably dying as well because there's he's been bathed in Icor and he's mortally wounded himself. Um, but he does have strength enough to um, last long enough to extract one final oath from her. The balance must be maintained without good, or I should say light. Darkness cannot grow without Darkness, good, or rather, light, stagnates. I know I cannot kill you. First you must surrender, is what he tells her. <laughs> Ow! That's humiliating. And you actually have um, the queen who tries to do him in, at which point... Um, well, sort of. Um, but at which point he survives. And you have her. You still live? What does it take to kill you? You are only mortal. And you have him. Despite the pain then, he laughed. I belong to Paladin. I belong to Gwyneth. Neither will ever let you have me. They are coming, Takesis. Who? <sighs> The other dragon lances. More than a hundred. A hundred times the pain and agony. I offered you a chance. They will not be so willing. You know that. They cannot kill me. They can give you eternal suffering. They cannot. The balance. You spoke of it. What do they care about the balance? So much better to have peace. That is what they will say. You will never free yourself before they arrive. Even if I die, they will still have you. A goddess at the mercy of mortals. What do you want? Withdraw from Kryn. I... Withdraw now! Very well. Withdraw your dragons as well. Never again must they... Come to Kryn. Take them with you. Swear to it. I do. And I just love how... He just browbeats her. And forces her into submission and you have her I swear that I shall with, withdraw withdraw from Kryn along with my children for as long as the world is whole so do I swear by by the beyond by the high god now she actually breaks her oath later I know people will say well the world is made unwhole with the cataclysm but the world is still technically whole she just twists things and breaks her word. And that's why the gods have to punish her and strip her of her divinity, because she eventually just keeps breaking her word. Even as she swears in the name of the high god who created her. And the thing is, Huma does not have the strength anymore to free her. And Kaz, amazed, stumbles on the scene and declares Huma the victor. And Huma tells Kaz to free Takesis. Takesis um, is probably still begging in the background. Kaz objects and Kaz just kind of says, I cannot. At which point Huma tells him, Kaz, I promised her. It is a question of my honor. You understand honor. We say, say, Esulares of Mifas in the old tongue. My honor is my life. Hurry, the lance. My honor. The others, they won't let you. My honor is my life. God's cows mutters and sets to work. At which point she's freed and has to return to the abyss. In the utter Humiliation as she cannot keep fighting and has been defeated by mortal hands. And if she were to continue, she'd die. Go figure.
That said, in the epilogue, Lord Oswell remarks about how the people need a hero. When Kaz is talking to the tomb of Huma about how they're building him a temple, a shrine. And the thing is, he takes off with one a medallion, that of Paladin, only to then disrespect it by hanging on a random branch as part of the trail, saying, Es Sulares of Mifas. Turning away, he abandons it, the last memento of Huma. I say abandons and disrespects because that's what this is. Why would you hang Huma's medallion on just some branch? Basically, this is him just chucking it, going, well, enough of that. On with the journey. No, no that's not how you end this story. And I actually think they should have, like, Richard Nack should have had him end with Kaz carrying it with him back to the Minotaur lands. Where he essentially converted to Paladin's worship. Yeah. This, him basically chucking it, it's like, wow, that's disrespectful. There goes all of uh, the character development. Yeah, to an extent. But in the next book, he actually carries with him the lessons of Huma with him in his heart in order to try to redeem his people. Now we know from later on the people are re-corrupted because Sargonis. But Kaz gives it as best he's got. But I'm going to argue thematically he should have carried the medallion with him and had it to rely upon it in the future. And so that there'd always be this almost... Uh, concretization, I guess you could say, of the light that exists within the Minotaurs. There's supposed to be a light within them. It's hard to believe in the Minotaur uh, trilogy from the Age of Mortals, but the thing is, this medallion is very symbolic, and I don't agree with this creative decision. I don't at all. So, this is a really good novel, and if you enjoyed this video, I would recommend you check out the book yourself, if you haven't already, and that you check out our Substack, where we're writing a bunch of fantasy novels, and also check out um, our Storyfire account over on Storyfire. So until next time, smash that like and that subscribe button to stay tuned.